I'll, start, I'll get started right now. Thanks for joining this presentation. Uh, this presentation is focused on the Poplar Board, which is the first 96 boards TV platform. And I'll be presenting this along with Hermit Wang from High Silicon. And uh, so this is a, an important mo moment for LHG and as well as 96 boards. Oh, there's my machine. Just an overview of the presentation, general information about the board, and then we'll talk about the Poplar hardware, um, an overview of the hardware on the board, the connectors, compare it with the actual 96 boards TV pl platform specification. We'll talk a, a bit about the Poplar software, and then the plan to use Poplar in the Lenaro Digital Home Group for development. And then we're also going to talk about some of our aspirations to have this board follow in the footsteps of the Hikey platform and perhaps you know, be accepted upstream with um, you know, an AOSP branch for, for Poplar and have more people develop AOSP and Android TV on it. And then we're gonna have a couple little demos at the end for fun and just show you some of the things that uh, have been um, set up for this board. One of them you saw already at George's keynote, but we've got a couple other things as in store as well. So in general, the, the Poplar board is manufactured by Tecoding Technologies, and we have uh, Stephen from Tecoding Technologies. They've done a very nice job, actually, of um, putting together a nice solution here. I've got the actual, the actual box, a good out-of-the-box experience, as they say. You see, I'm going to hold this up, the, the Poplar box. So as what it comes with, of course, you've got the power supply, you have a remote control, you have actually a little Wi-Fi antenna, and then you have the board itself. Here it is. So right now, the, as, it, as I mentioned, it's manufactured by Tecoding. There's a web link there for 96 boards Poplar on their site. Uh, on their site, they have a link for the 96 boards Poplar hardware manual. Very nice, very complete manual there. And then they have the data sheet for the SOC that powers this board, the High Silicon 3798C V200 and they also have the Poplar board schematics available on their site as well. So very nice um, supporting website for the board with a lot of information on the hardware. It's currently on sale through AliExpress, $79 for plus shipping. So it's you know, quite a low cost, um, you know, easy to order board. Um, and as was mentioned, this board actually has support for tuner cards and transport stream interfaces and there will be accompanying tuner cards that will be available very soon as well. So I held up the board but here's something you can probably get a better view of it. Um, the board has the uh, 3798 SOC um, but it has a whole host of peripherals and support. It has uh, two gigabit of, or sorry, two gigabyte of, of RAM, eight gigabyte of flash. Um, it has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, micro USB, a USB to UART converter. At the front here, it has a smart card expansion connector for additional work you might want to do with uh, an external smart card for decryption. It has, of course, a USB dual stack 2.0 support here. There's an infrared detector there for the remote control. Onboard UART, which is very nice. JTAG as well. Uh, as I mentioned, two gig, two gig of RAM, boot selection pins. There's a PCIe expansion connector on this as well, which is gives you a lot of opportunities down the road to um, 
uh, add other components to this board. Um, SD card, RJ45 Ethernet, a USB 3.0 port on the back, a digital audio SPDIF connector, um, an analog uh, audio video jack, uh, HDMI 2.0 A support with HDCP 2.2, and a reset button, and of course the power. And on the right here is the transport stream connector. So that will allow the board to uh, connect to a separate tuner card. So again, it was approximately six months ago in Bangkok when I spoke of the spec that we were just finishing up for the enterprise version, which is the TV platform variant of the enterprise board. This is essentially the, the requirements that, are, are, you know, that we've specified for that board. And you can see that this whole area here is left for whatever peripherals the uh, SOC provider decides to put. So just to go back, you can see, <laughs> I don't know if you can see quite clearly one to one, but you can see here all of the, the peripherals. The Ethernet was flexible. You could move it to the back if you wanted to. And so, again, it's from the time that the spec was released, we now have the first board. And as George announced today, we've got other TV platform boards on the way from other LHG members as well. So as I mentioned, the board the SOC is the 3798, that's a quad core 64-bit A53. Uh, the graphics processor is uh, ARM Mali GPU 720. It can support H.265 HEVC 4K graphics up to 60 frames per second. And VP9 video decoding also at 4K at 60 frames per second. It supports ARM Trust Zone, trusted execution environment secure boot, secure storage, DRM, and downloadable conditional access system. Again, the memory, two gig DDR3, DRAM, eight gig flash, and the micro SD card. The display interface, HDMI 2.0a with HDCP 2.2, so that allows up to 4K, uh, 60 frame per second output. Wireless 802.11 AC with Bluetooth. At the front, there's a dual stack USB 2.0 as well as a USB 3.0 on the back. The, the chip itself is capable of doing SATA, but um, they, with, with the 3.0 as well as um, the PCIe, it was determined that there was already high-speed peripheral uh, capabilities provided by that. On the extended interface, every 96 board is required to have the low-speed connection or expansion connector. Uh, again, a one gigabit Ethernet, the PCIe 2.0 interface, JTAG, UART, infrared receiver, smart card pin, and then the 24 pin uh, tuner connector. It's currently uh, out of the box. It's running Android 5.1.1. And it's, again, it's on the standard Enterprise Edition form factor, which is 160 by 120 millimeters. Uh, some of the options, as I've mentioned, there very soon there will be available the companion tuner cards, so DVB cards for cable, terrestrial T2, satellite S2, and it comes with remote control, and you can, of course, connect a smart card, separate smart card module to the board as well. So it's Again, $79 development board. Really what we're trying to do is, and, and High Silicon did was create a fully featured development board that can exercise a wide range of use cases. So um, having the tuner support for um, you know, a, a tuner, you can have a combination of linear services from a cable terrestrial satellite provider coupled with broadband IP over the top, and you can start looking in developing TV input framework type use cases. The board is powered by the 3798 
uh, SOC, and this is just giving an overview of some of uh, the things I've mentioned already, but um, you know, very powerful SOC for the set top and uh, the, the Mali T720 uh, GPU. I think I've mentioned pretty much everything already that's, that's on this. So the Mali 720 GPU it has eight shader cores, uh, two MMUs, two level two cache, and is connected by the AMBA bus. So I think that this is the Midgard family. The previous high keyboard was, I believe, 450 on the older family. So we're, we, we've moved into the, the Midgard family of GPUs, which is great because they're, they're better supported by ARM. And so uh, we expect to be able to uh, you know, have very good graphics performance with this platform. As I mentioned, one of the features is having the transport stream connector to a tuner. It's a 24 pin, I don't know if you can see it that well in this shot, but 24 pin interface to a tuner card. And this is an example of one of the Tacoding TVB, TVB T2 tuner cards. We'll have a demo later on where we, we have a tuner card uh, attached to the board and we feed in content through that. I just took a picture of this of five minutes ago. I don't know if, it, if it's clear to the folks in the back, but you can see that here is the tuner card connected to the T, uh, TS in input. And so again, we'll, we'll show a demo of that. And here we have the Wi-Fi antenna. We hope that <laughs> we'll have enough Wi-Fi throughput to, to demo um, a live streaming uh, source. We'll, we'll see how that works. On the software side, I mentioned that the board ships with Android 5.1 and currently with kernel 3.18. Uh, PCIe support will be coming soon. One of the major efforts that uh, High Silicon will be undertaking, working with other partners as well as Lenaro, is to upstream the, the Poplar kernel. Uh, that's going to be a, a dedicated effort coming up. Trying to get to a, a recent kernel, I think you is 4.9 you're, you're targeting for that. So it's going to take a bit of time to get all of the, the kernel drivers and everything upstream, but in, in while they're in flight, we can still be using them with an LHG. Uh, the bootloader, again, one of the features that we like is that it's an unlocked bootloader. It allows us to um, use OPT. It's currently supporting U-boot but uh, with an LHG and the set-top space, we, are, we, are, we have a project underway to implement UEFI on um, set-tops. So what we're looking for here is to be able to continue that work that we've started on the high keyboard and migrate everything over to the Poplar board. Within LHG, we've been working with uh, member boards in the past and we which served us well, but we had issues when other people wanted to get these boards, having to go through a particular company. They were not available in quantities. So of course, 96 boards has really removed that roadblock for us. Anybody can buy these boards, and uh, it really ex um, accelerates our development. Getting the, the board into more developers' hands helps us um, get more done more quickly. So as I mentioned, with the unlocked bootloader, we can, we can continue our work with OPT and, of course, uh, based on ARM-trusted firmware, uh, we can work through all of the, you know, the, the security, uh, low-level security implementation uh, cases that we, we need to, to look at. So within the Lenaro Digital Home Group, uh, we're looking to make Poplar uh, one of our primary development boards. Uh, again, we finally have our first 96 board that is targeted to the TV, you know, media-focused market with all the peripherals and uh, capabilities that we need. 
So as I mentioned, LHG will work closely with high silicon through the process of their upstreaming efforts of the, of the poplar kernel. And we look to use this board on both our Linux um, RDK related work as well as our, our AOSP Android uh, TV related work. So as I mentioned, Android AOSP TV is what we're working on in, our, in LHG. The RDK, of course, um, based on the North American set-top market primarily. And we're also looking at the tvOS uh, project that's happening in China right now, where the Chinese government has been sponsoring a uh, for the last almost a couple years now a, a specific television operating system for the Chinese market. And so we've been looking at that source code and working with um, some of the architects who are, who are developing that as well. So again, this Poplar board will be able to enable us to do all of the development on, on all of these different uh, operating systems. And so it, again, it's, it, it has all the functionality we need for that. One thing we do in LHG is we contribute to the reference platform builds that are uh, created, and we have been providing Linux, primarily Linux-based builds, and based on our input from our steering committee on Linux, we've had the, the open SDK, a lot of these components have been uh, placed into the reference platform builds, and we'll be working, of course, more with Android as well. And so these LHG reference platform board um, builds help our members accelerate their development by providing these reference platform solutions with a lot of the building blocks, either for Android or for Linux, already stitched together. So when, when we have these 96 boards, our members can then just take our reference platform builds and use that as to get a leg up on, on their product development. One of the things that we've done in LHG, as Zoltan spoke earlier today, is we have a commercial DRM integrations with OPT. We've been working with the security working group to uh, provide widevine and play ready commercial DRM integrations with OPT. That's one of the things that we can create reference platform builds for our members as well. We've done it on high key and we'll migrate that work to um, the Poplar as well. Same thing with ARM Trust Zone and OPT. Uh, we can then keep track with or keep up with all the latest OPT versions and have a platform board to continuously have them running on as, as that work progresses. On the Linux side, we use uh, open embedded builds, open embedded Yocto. Uh, so we have uh, recently migrated all of our reference platform builds on Linux to the latest Yocto 2.1 release. So these builds are all actually um, available to our members and on, you know, LHG was in instrumental in getting the open embedded, uh, the first open embedded builds created for the overall Linaro reference platform build um, work that's going on. One of the initiatives that we're, be, we're going to be ramping up in LHG is something we're calling AOSP TV. Uh, we're looking at AOSP, but for the TV form factor. So uh, of course with high key, it's AOSP for the mobile form factor, but we're looking to do more work with AOSP television for the Android TV components, device support, bringing in the security, OPT, widevine, uh, some of the Android HAL work that's being done, uh, media and graphics acceleration in applications. So this is going to be going forward uh, another initiative that LHG will be focusing on. Uh, one of the things that if you want the board to be accepted by Google, it has to pass their compatibility test suite as well as meet their uh, hardware software compatibility definition. And so that compatibility definition document is something that you can just download from the web and you can see all of the requirements that are necessary to have an Android TV compliant board 
which we believe the popular board uh, meets those criteria. And one of the things that we're looking to do in LHG, similar to what LMG does, is you have your base uh, Android builds, and then you have the additional pieces that you add on in what they call the, the, the member LCR builds, but we're going to create member builds for uh, LHG members that will have things such as all of the security integrations with the commercial DRMs, as well as all of the other improvements we start making on Android and the media frameworks. As I mentioned, the fact that there is a tuner allows you to exercise all of the Android TV, TV input framework use cases. So you have like this hybrid scenario, like these hybrid types of set-top boxes where you have a combination of linear services that may be de delivered by a cable or satellite vendor. And then you can also combine those with broadband IP services that come over the internet from you know, folks like uh, Netflix, et cetera. And one of the things that in, in Android uh, TV is that they abstract away with the TV input framework all of the sources, the video input sources, are all abstracted away. So you get a unified guide of all the cable and broadband content put together. And when you navigate or select through it, you, you don't know or have to know what the actual video source is. So they're trying to really um, provide a much more unified, um, easier to use viewing experience with their TV input framework use cases. As I mentioned, there is the Android TV uh, compatibility definition document. There's a link to it there. Um, as we upstream the popular kernel to AOSP mainline, we'd like to include ARM trusted firmware. And it, I mentioned we, we would also like to migrate to a UEFI runtime environment. And then all of the general compatibility requirements for all the things that we'd like to do in what we're calling AOSB TV. So that's pretty much the summary of the board. Uh, I'll take a pause for any questions or comments and uh, we'll start getting a couple demos ready to show you guys. Any questions? I think it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> Okay, so Hermit's the man behind the curtain. Um, if you want to, uh, yep. All right, so here we have a poplar board. Uh, this is what you get out of the box. Uh, we're running on it. You have you know, Android and a, a few apps. Let me see here. I've got to get my phone ready here. So there's an application you can download for your phone here, and this is what we demoed uh, with, with, with George. And so we've picked this speedboat racing game. I'll see what I can do with it.
especially where we see as we have a special penal code connected to the war. However, for the actual story, this meeting is not allowed. Four channel for the uh, the chat was screen, and uh, here uh, w my uh, desktop uh, is is kind of a transmitter. We will transmit the transport stream to the uh, to the board, and uh, here we got a tuner board, uh, which will receive the signal and uh, just display the uh, DTV uh, on, on the board. The last one we'll try uh, will probably be bandwidth challenged, but we're going to try to play with the EXO player adaptive streaming content. Here you can see wide bind dash. This is uh, H264. Which one are you picking? The uh, main profile H264 or or or, it's, or it is UHD? Oh, it's not the. It's okay. Well, it just froze. Do we have a lower resolution one? So that was a 4K one actually, but it, the, the bandwidth it requires is. Um, oh, so here we have, it's an adaptive bitrate version. This is the lower 800 kilobits version. Uh, not so good, but it, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't freeze. Actually, and it's still playing on my phone as well. Again, when we have a higher bandwidth environment, we can, we can go up to the the Ultra HD during some other instruments. Oh, right, so right. So Dash and via a, a Microsoft Smooth Streaming as well as Apple HLS, all of the adaptive streaming protocols are supported in this application. They're there, but they're all in the clear, right, at this point, yeah. But, um, I, don't have the security enabled here yet. But we, we have all of this actually, and we've demoed that on the high key with Opti, with the EXO player and encrypted content. So, But anyway, this board is something that we're going to be migrating to in LHG. And uh, again, we're excited to have our first TV platform board available. And we know there's more on the way from other vendors. So um, for LHG and, and all of the developers, our members, as well as the larger community, we think we can really make a strong impact here with uh, with these boards and reference uh, solutions that we can make available. All right, that's it. Thank you, everyone.